On the ventilator, as we ventilate our patients, one of the things that we're most challenged by is setting PEEP in the correct way. The other thing that we're limited by as well is airway pressure doesn't always tell us where the pressures lie. Part of the pressure as we deliver the volume forward to the patient's lungs is spent to inflate the lungs. The other part is what it takes to move the thoracic cage out of the way as it accepts that volume inside the lungs. How do we separate these two? How do we delineate between airway pressure, that pressure that's inside the lungs and pressure that's out? With a G5 ventilator with esophageal pressure monitoring, it's a pretty easy and simple way to do it. As you'll notice, we have the G5 ventilator. We have an esophageal line that's going to our esophageal catheter. We have a proximal flow sensor that's capturing the most accurate pressures, flows, and volumes all where it happens, right at the interface of the ET tube. Inside this box is basically a simulated thoracic space. We have an esophageal catheter that's in there that would normally be placed in the esophageal space in the lower one-third of the esophagus, directly behind the heart and just above the diaphragm. And we would use that pressure as a surrogate for pleural pressure. This technology has been around for over 50 years, and it's just been fairly recent that we're starting to embrace and learn what it truly can provide at the bedside. With the G5, with a simple touch of the screen, I can change this flow to read esophageal. And I can change this volume to read transpulmonary. We have airway pressure, esophageal displaying the pressure that we have currently in the uh, in, inside a box, and then transpulmonary pressure, which is the balance of which is the true distending pressure of the lung. If I was to freeze this screen and scroll back capture the airway pressure, it says six centimeters of PEEP. The pressure outside the lungs is zero because we haven't pressurized at this time. The balance of which gives me six centimeters of water pressure. So in essence, airway pressure, combination of what's seen inside the lungs and outside the lungs combined, subtracting out what's outside the lungs, which we're able to measure with esophageal, gives us transpulmonary. Transpulmonary pressure at the end expiratory phase would be the true distending pressure of the lungs at end expiratory phase, or transpulmonary PEEP. And in the inspiratory phase, it would be transpulmonary plateau. To demonstrate for you what happens when the pressure outside the lungs exceeds the pressure that we've applied with PEEP, we've increased the pressure to this box to 16 centimeters of water pressure. Because we have an esophageal catheter in place, we can tell you exactly what that pressure is and reconfirm the settings that we've dialed in. Notice, if you will, before we do that, just how many of those alveoli are collapsing from breath to breath. We know the cyclic swing to alveolar collapse exacerbates lung injury. So let's go to the G5, if you will, scroll back to the period just before the beginning of the inspiratory phase. So I'm essentially at tail end expiratory. Airway pressure says six. The pressure outside the lungs is now 16. 6 minus 16 gives you a deficit of negative 10 centimeters of water pressure. Watch what happens when we increase the PEEP to 16 to equally match the pressure outside of the lungs. Now if I freeze the screen and scroll back, while airway pressure reads 16 in relationship to the PEEP that I have set, the pressure outside the lungs remains 16 centimeters of water pressure, giving me a balance of zero centimeters of water pressure, a transpulmonary PEEP of zero. We've increased our PEEP from six to 16 centimeters of water pressure. And while that is a 10 centimeter water pressure increase, our airway pressure actually dropped as we facilitated alveolar recruitment. If we performed a short inspiratory hold, and I'll wait until it catches through here in this next one, so let's do an inspiratory hold. All right. If we freeze this screen during the period of alveolar plateau or the inspiratory plateau, the airway pressure refills 32 centimeters of water pressure. The pressure outside the lungs is 16, ending with a transpulmonary plateau pressure of 16 centimeters of water pressure. Our objective is to always keep this transpulmonary plateau pressure less than 20 centimeters of water pressure. So by equally matching the pressure outside the lungs with PEEP, we are effectively recruiting alveolar units that were previously collapsed. This in turn enhances our oxygenation as well as our ventilation and works towards a truly lung protective strategy.